turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, at chapter number 12. Luke, chapter number 12, commencing in verse 13 through verse number 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower that all fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. This morning I want to preach from this subject, How Not to Be a Fool. I know it may be too late for some of us, but I want to help the rest of us this morning to learn how not to be a fool. This pericope, this, this passage of scripture is occasioned by this, this unnamed man who comes to Jesus because there is a family dispute. His brother is being unfair in dividing the, the inheritance. Uh, there is a, a, a civil matter going on. And he comes to Jesus not for salvation, but for arbitration. He comes to Jesus who is the prince of life to settle some trivial legal matter. He comes to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith to handle some little testament, some little, some little last will matter. He comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, essentially, my brother is, is mistreating me. Make him, make him act right towards me. Make him divide the inheritance fairly with me. He, he says, Master, speak to him that he divide the inheritance, that he, that he, that he split it right, let it, that he be fair with me. And Jesus in this passage is rather curt and short. Uh, Jesus doesn't usually speak to people like that. Jesus is not usually impatient and, and short-tempered as he seems to be in this passage. And I suspect Jesus is saying, uh, I, I came here to die on the cross and, and you worrying me about a will. Come on, come on. Uh, here is a crown over you and you were in me by some ground under you. 
I've come here to speak to you of eternal life and you want me to speak to your brother about some knives and forks and sheets and pillowcases spoons and shoes suits and clothes he said man who who made me a judge or a divider over you and if you want to see a family act a fool especially if you got three or four in the family if you want to see a mess in your family let somebody die and leave three or four pennies in the bank I ain't talking about no real money. I mean, if they leave some, just, just three or four hundred dollars in the bank, they'll stop speaking to each other uh, over a shiffer roll. Uh, you, you haven't heard that word in a long time, have you? Uh, over some spoons and, and some pots. Uh, mama's last words uh, was for me to have that jewelry. Come on, talk back to me if you can. We'll get mad and fall out and don't speak to each other for years over nonsense, over foolishness. Jesus said, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he springboards from this conversation into a teachable moment for his disciples. He says, take heed. Listen to this conversation. Watch what just took place Take heed, beware of covetousness. Beware of an inordinate lust for things. Beware of, of an out of bounds want for stuff. Beware of covetousness. For a man's real life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Life is not determined by what you own, but by who owns you. Uh, your, your, your heart strings can't be tied to your checkbook. I wish I had a witness here. Because if what you have makes you who you are, when you die, Everything that's you goes in a six-foot plot. And if we can bury everything that's you on the day of your funeral, you didn't live in the first place. Because if your life consists in the small things that you collect and gather, then your life has had no real meaning and no real purpose. And then Jesus uses this occasion to talk to them from a parable. And he said to them the story, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And uh, after he amassed all of this crop, he said, my barns are too small to collect all of this stuff. So I will tear down these small barns and build bigger ones. And then I will have enough room to bestow all my fruits and all of my goods. And then I will say to my soul, soul, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Clarence Jordan in his Cotton Patch translation of the Bible calls that uh, recline, dine, wine, and shine. Take it easy. Sit back. Be careful talking to yourself about your stuff because there's a conversation going on that you can't hear because when you start talking about what you own and what you have and what you buy and who you are there's another voice that speaks from eternity and after he says all of these things, I will tear down these small bonds and build bigger bonds and I will have room to, to bestow all my fruits and my goods and I will say to my soul, soul, it's time for you to retire. Take it easy. Enjoy yourself. You deserve to sit back and enjoy what you have amassed. But God said, I want you to see the simultaneous juxtaposition. He said, 
but God said. Don't miss that. He said, but God said. He said all the stuff he was going to do, but God said. I don't care what he said. God has the last word. He said, but God said. Some of you who were raised by parents like my parents, my mother had some friends who would come over to visit with her and uh, they would stay sometimes over into the night drinking coffee and talking. And then uh, my mother would walk them a piece to their house. Uh, she'd go down the street with them a while. And it was Miss Lily or Miss Leona, but before they left, uh, she said, Lily, I'll see you tomorrow if the Lord says the same. Or, or Lily, Miss Lily would say, may I see you tomorrow if the Lord spares. Well, they never left each other's company. They never bid each other farewell. They never talked about what they were going to do tomorrow without tagging on if the Lord spares. If the Lord says the same. Be, be, be careful talking about your stuff and, and where you're going tomorrow and what you're going to do when you retire and what, what's going to happen with your stuff. Be careful of how you talk to yourself about your stuff because there's a voice that speaks from eternity. He said, but God said, fool, tonight your soul is required. But, but, but here is the line that, that makes me tremble all in my shoes. Then whose shall those things be? Who gonna get the stuff you provide it. Somebody ought to help me shout right here. Who going to get all that stuff you work for? Who going to drive your truck? Who going to wear your good nightgowns that you will save until you go to the hospital? Who going to eat on your china that you didn't use until Thanksgiving and Christmas? Who's going to sit in your furniture that you wouldn't let your grandchildren sit on? Don't drive your car when it's raining. Got plastic all over your lamps. Got certain dishes you can't eat out of. Believe me when I tell you this. These children are waiting for you to die. I'm telling you, it's a setup. They got it all figured out. They've already planned what to do with your money. That's why I'm spending it all. I, I, want, I want my last check to bounce before I die. Stop that foolishness of not taking a vacation and not enjoying yourself and not, not praising God for what he's done for you and, and not sharing what God has given to you. A man's real life is not measured by what he owns, but by who owns him. Let me help us this morning to not be a fool. It's pretty bad when we call each other a fool. But you don't want God to call you a fool. Here is why this man in the text was a fool. And conversely, if we, if we take what he did and reverse it, it will help us not to be a fool. This man in the text was a fool because he spent Everything he had on time and not eternity. Everything about him was wrapped up in right now. And listen, when you are busy accumulating and, and put your head down and making money and all you think about is money and clothes and cash and cars, you think that you're wealthy, but you can't enjoy yourself. 
Because everything is about overtime and making money. And I got to get up early. And I got, to, I, got to give, I, got, I got to be there to get this. I got to make sure I get that. Uh, I've got to put my money in this stock. And I've got to put my investments over here. And I don't know what the market is going to do. And I don't know what the, who the president is going to be. And I've got to make sure that I get this. And I amass that. And I accumulate this. And then you're watching the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you're watching S&P. And you're watching Wall Street. I don't know anything. It looked like to me all that paper on the floor. Would, I just have to go see sweep it up because it's just a whole lot of trash and junk down there for me but when you think about it it's really a whole lot of trash and junk down there because when one second after he dies Bill Gates will be the same as a beggar on the street one second after Bill Gates dies one second after Bezos dies, who owns Amazon, he will be on the same level as the man on the corner of 610 and Scott. Because you will bring nothing into judgment with you but your naked soul. And what does it profit a man to gain the world and then lose his soul? Elvis, the King Presley, had millions of dollars and millions of fans. People are still going now to Graceland, to Elvis Presley's mansion. But Elvis once said his mother was the only real friend he ever had. And Elvis, the King Presley, millions of dollars, millions of fans. People are still going to Graceland, but Elvis died on a cold bathroom floor from a drug overdose with no friends and no family. Howard Hughes, from right here in Houston, one of the richest men at one time who ever lived. Hughes Tool Company and Hughes Movies and Hughes Oil. Howard Hughes died on a lonely airplane between Acapulco and Houston. A hermit, a man who almost lost his mind because he was a germaphobe. Howard Hughes died on a lonely airplane by himself. J. Paul Getty of the Getty Oil Fortune was so mean and surly that he had black draperies on his bedroom windows to keep out sunlight. Three Alaskan train killer dogs outside his bedroom door to keep away visitors. But one night death got in over the sleeping dogs and said, get it tonight. Elvis, tonight. Howard Hughes, tonight. Members of Lily Grove, tonight. Your soul is required in the judgment. Then who shall those things that you provided. He was a fool because he spent more on time than he did on eternity. And then he was a fool because he spent more on the material rather than the spiritual. He was more concerned about the material rather than the spiritual. In the story, this man has crops, he has abundance, he has wealth that has been accumulated from years of industry, but he takes no thought of who sent the sunshine. Who sent the rain to make those crops grow? Who provided the soil? And then who gave him strength to make wealth? Who woke him up every morning? Who provided a roof over his head? None of those things ever entered his mind because all he could think about was what he owned. Listen, it's right here in the text. Listen, let's walk around these personal pronouns and hopefully they will mess you up like they messed me up. 
and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my I my I my himself I my himself I my himself is all about I my himself and when everything in your life is about I my and myself you're spending more time on the material in the spiritual Is nothing in my house I don't use. Let me say that one more time. There's nothing in my house I don't use. If I feel like it, I just go in the, in the, in the china cabinet and get a good cup. And drink coffee out of it. And leave it on the counter. Ain't no man gonna come in here and drink out of no cup I ain't never drank out of. Somebody ought to help me preach it. No, 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 no. If he gonna sit down in front of the TV, I done watched it already. I done seen that show five or six times. Shoes ain't too good for me to wear. I don't have no Sunday shoes. I used to have that when I, when, when, I was, when, when I was in my mom and daddy's house. I had Sunday shoes and school shoes and, and, and no shoes. But God's been good to me. And I, I don't take any blessing that God has given me for granted that I put it on the shelf and make it an idol. Because any time you con concentrate it more on stuff that's spiritual than on stuff that or stuff that's material than stuff that is spiritual, you've turned it into an idol. Your, your little grandbaby is too cute. You don't whip them. They silly and 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 talking back and telling you to shut up. And spitting on you and telling you no, 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 no. He, he, he ain't too pretty where he can't go in the hospital. You have turned that baby into an idol. Somebody ought to help me preach it. Uh, there was a little child here. And, uh, you know, he's real bad, they say. And uh, I was just kidding around playing with him and they say, oh, pastor, you lucky he didn't kick you. I said, no. He lucky he didn't kick me. Because I don't love him like y'all love him. If he kicked me, I'm going to teach him what his feet are for. Come on, help me preach if you can. We, 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 need to, we need to get back to parents who ain't scared of their children. And, and, and houses where we seek first the kingdom of God and our, his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us. We need to get to the place where we are not so concerned about what is material that we leave alone what really matters. Listen, listen, listen to me. You can't put money in church because you're so concentrated on the material. You can't tithe. You can't give because you're so concerned about your 401k. 
and your savings. And I got to take care of myself. And uh, the Lord understands. And so you don't put any money in church. You're not a giver. You're not a tither. You're not generous because you are trying to hoard it and, and keep it to yourself because you got to save for a rainy day. Uh, I got to take care of my grandchildren. I got to take care of my son. I got to look out for my daughter. And, and your boy is 61 years old, still in your house. Still asking his mama for gas money. Well, I can't put him out. Yes, you can. No, we owe our children two things. We owe them roots of responsibility and wings of independence. Teach them how to live and put them out. Now, I know that, that don't set well with your theology because I, in our culture, we are the only ones who let our children stay with us till they're on social security. But you have turned them into an idol. You have crippled, you have hurt them when you have not taught them that life is about more than what you own and possess. When, when you concentrated on the material, you don't know how silly that makes you look. And God calls you a fool. There's a man right around in this neighborhood with a, a, a Bentley Rolls Royce with some 13-inch spokes, wheel, uh, elbows on him. Uh, a Bentley. I'm not talking about a Chrysler that looks like a Bentley. I'm talking about a, a, a Bentley with some 14-inch elbows on him. Beautiful car, new car. And he has some spokes, these big, you can't hardly get next to him because these, these things are rolling and they and they and they spinning, and uh, it, it it was so funny to me that I just pulled up next to him and took a picture of it. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Man, that's a bad ride." <laughs> he said, "Oh, thank you, man. It ain't, it, you know, it's just just a little something to ride around in." And 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 I was too scared to tell him, "You fool," because <laughs> you know these people carry guns with them now. You know. I, I didn't have the nerve to say, you fool, you riding around here with a car that don't need nothing but some armor on. Right. This car don't need nothing but gas in it. And you riding around making it looking like a ghetto uh, wagon of some kind. Because you're so concerned about them. And then there are those in your neighborhood and mine with these sound systems that cost more than the car. Your house is rumbling and shaking and they down the street with this music and the music stuff they put in the car is worth more than the car is worth. Because we are more concerned about the material than the spiritual. Yes. Yes, sir. Then many of you in here don't shout and don't move because you're so perfectly quaffed and immaculately dressed that you want to sit by yourself. You don't want nobody that close to you because you don't want to sweat out your silk. Girl, please. All the doors God has opened for you. All the prayers God has answered for you. All the enemies God has put down for you. All the, all the tears God has dried for you. Let everything. I said let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. If God's been good to you. If you lose your job in the morning. God will make a way out of nowhere. Because I know some people here who, who lost their job. And never missed a meal. Because he's Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. He will make a way out of no way. He will help you raise your children by yourself. Somebody here ought to help me testify. 
somebody here who's been through some stuff knows that if God took that from you, he's getting ready to give you something better. If God closes a door, he's getting ready to open a window. And listen, God ain't trying to find a way to bless you. He'll make a way to bless you. When it looks like you're at the end of your rope, God will step right in and make a way out of no way. I want to have, I got a witness here this morning that God will never leave you nor forsake you because if you put your trust in God, if you put your hand in God's hand, watch him work on your behalf. There's some testimonies in this church of people who have to take care of their sick parents, who put their lives on hold, missed out on promotions and, and raises on their job, but somehow God made it up. I wish I had some noise here. You, you decided that you were just going to trust God with your money. God, I don't know how you're going to fix it. I don't know how these bills are going to get paid. But I'm going to put my trust in you because your word says that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. God, I'm going to trust you on that today. And you are here this morning to testify. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. When you concentrate on the spiritual and leave the material with God, the word bears me out here. Seek ye first. The kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these other things would just be added unto you. God will just throw some stuff in there that you didn't ask for. I wish I had somebody to help me shout. That's called serendipity. God will just give you what you didn't even ask for. Uh, you, you, have to, you have to be from Louisiana to help me shout right here. Uh, you, you Texas people, just watch us shout. And uh, let me give you a Louisiana colloquialism uh, that'll help you really understand what I'm talking about in this little text here. Uh, in, in Louisiana, there's a word that we use for something extra called lanyop. Lanyop. L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E, lanyop. Uh, if I go to your house with a, a bowl of soup uh, and bring my, my vessel there with a bowl of soup, lanyop is when you bring it back, is more than what I put in. You bring me back some soup, some cornbread, some... Some, some, some sweet potatoes, some, some cake. I, I didn't bring all that. I just brought you some soup. But to show your appreciation, you just give me some lanyard. That, that's what God does when you pray and pray right. You, you bring him the tithe. You bring him your offering and he'll give you some lanyard. He'll make the doctor come back with a good report. He'll make them give you a raise on your job when they said you fired. He'll make your enemy your footstool. He'll just make a way out of nowhere. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can even ask or think.
My grandmother, my grandmother would drink coffee and she'd keep a coffee pot on the stove all day long. And some of y'all remember those little, those little two-piece coffee pots. Uh, they put that coffee grind in there and, and put a pot on the stove and heat some water and keep that coffee pot in that hot water heated all day long because she kept a pot of fresh coffee. Uh, I learned how to drink coffee sitting down with mama and uh, mama would make coffee all day long and uh, she knew I liked to get that sugar at the bottom of the cup and she would put a lot of sugar in her coffee so that I could get the cup when she got through and, and get that sugar at the bottom. But, but once in a while she let it run over into the saucer. And, 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 and she would drink out the cup and hand me the saucer. You see where I'm trying to go with this? Fill my cup and let it overflow. And those of us who are shouting here this morning, we're shouting over God's overflow. God's just letting some stuff overflow in your life that you didn't even ask for. You weren't even looking for. You didn't even pray for that. But God just let it overflow because you know that if you trust God, he'll make a way for you. Thank God for living in the overflow. He was a fool because he spent everything he had on time rather than eternity. And then he was a fool because he spent everything on the material and nothing on the spiritual. But finally, he's a fool because he spent everything on himself and nothing for others. And when life is all about you, I, my, myself, and others never come into your sphere of concern. You a fool. Others never entered his mind. Now with all that crop he had, he never thought to give his neighbor some. He never thought to share with his friends. He never thought that instead of building bigger barns, I will give some of this stuff away. And you never think about your house may be too small because you got too much stuff in it. You don't need a bigger house, you need to get rid of some of this stuff. Talk back to me if you can. Um, again, my daddy raised hogs and grew corn and, and uh, okra and, and, and uh, tomatoes because he had a lot of children. There was 10 of us in our family. And my mother didn't go to work until Johnny was in the first grade. So my daddy had to feed all those children. And he had hogs that he raised in the backyard and, and tomatoes and, 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 and cabbage and cucumbers. And um, my daddy never took any of the stuff in without thinking about people who were around us. My neighbor, our neighbor down the street, Mr. Albert Hayes, would go hunting and he'd come back with two or three rabbits and give my mother a rabbit or two and, and say, when you, when, you, when you cook it, send me a piece. My cousin down the street went fishing and he never went fishing without bringing us some perch when he got through fishing. Because we shared with everybody in the neighborhood. Around this time of year, November, getting cold, my daddy would have a hog or two killed. And uh, Miss Leona had some pig's feet. Uh, Miss Gracie wanted a roast. Uh, Miss Ella down the street liked to put pigtails in her greens. And that pig was gone because my daddy shared it with everybody in the neighborhood. And now 
we almost barbecue in the house. Because we don't want nobody to smell the smoke and come over and, 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 and ask for a piece of meat. That's how low down we are. That's how stingy we are. My, I, myself. And when you live to yourself, you die by yourself. Did you hear that? When you live to yourself, you die by yourself. I will tear down these small bonds and build greater. And I will say to my soul, soul, take it easy. Eat, drink, be merry. But God said, fool, hey, you, I'm, I'm talking to you. Fool, tonight, your soul is required. You, you, you got to come up here and give an account of what you did with what I gave you. We will not be judged by what we have, but by what we've shared. Is anybody happier because you passed this way? Does anyone remember that you spoke to him today? The day is almost over and the toiling time is through. Is there anyone to utter now a kind word of you? Can you say in parting with the day that's slipping fast that you've helped a single brother of the many that you passed? Did you waste the day or lose it? Was it well or sorely spent? Did you leave a trail of kindness or a scar of discontent. Tonight, when you close your eyes in slumber, do you think God will say that you've earned one more tomorrow by the good you've done today? If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. He was a fool because he spent more on time than he did on eternity. He was a fool because he invested more in the material than he did in the spiritual. He was a fool because he was about all about himself and nothing about others. Now, if you don't want to be a fool, let's turn it around. Build your hopes on things eternal. Because everything you have, everything you own, everything you drive, everything you wear, everything you sleep in, everything you eat on, everything you invest in has temporary written on it. Everything is passing away. That there's a law, spiritual, and the only reason I know something about it because it has something to do with anything, something spiritual. The second law of thermodynamics has to do with something spiritual. The second law of thermodynamics says that everything will eventually run down. You will eventually run down. I don't care how cute you are, I don't care how young you are, I don't care how fine you are, I don't care how virile and strong you are, Sooner or later, you will run down. Some of us here over 50 can testify that I used to could remember anything I wanted to remember. Now if I want to remember, I got to write it down and try to remember what I wrote it on. And then if I remember what I wrote it on, I got to try to remember where I put it. Come on, help me preach if you can. You go in a room and forget what you went in there for? Looking for your cell phone and it's in your hand? Because you will eventually run down. You won't be able to see as far in the distance as you used to. 
can't walk as fast as you used to. You used to walk in the room and, and people would say, <laughs> but you come in the room now and they say, Lord help us. <laughs> Poor thing. Help us somebody. Because you will eventually run down. But when your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness, it doesn't matter what happens in time, your treasure is in eternity. I've got another building. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heaven. Shift it again. When you put your treasure in what is spiritual rather than in what is material, when you lose your material wealth, it can't destroy your spiritual wealth. Don't, don't, don't lay up treasures where moth can corrupt it, where thieves can break through and steal it. But send treasures in heaven where moth can't corrupt it and thieves can't break through and steal it. And then finally, when you live for others rather than for yourself, here's the shout, you are most like Jesus. Because Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. I didn't come to be ministered to but I came to be a ransom for many. I, I did not come to be a king. I came to lay down my life for those that the Father has given me. I came not to live for myself, but I came to live and to die for others. Some men worry themselves into nameless graves while other men forget themselves into eternity. Some men worry themselves into nameless graves while other men forget themselves into eternity. Jesus came and suffered and died and he didn't have to do it. He did nothing wrong. He, there was no fault in him. There was no guile in him. There was no deceit in him. He came to lay down his life for a wretch like you and I. And when you give yourself to others, may not be a whole lot of folk at your funeral. May not be a whole lot of flowers. It may not be Doves turn to loose at the cemetery and, and you may not have a white carriage with horses to carry you down there. But all of that and you're going to hell? No. No, I'd rather one rose be on my coffin and two or three people at my funeral who loved me put me in the ground and go eat some barbecue. Because what's really happening is not happening at the cemetery. When I get home, when I see Jesus, bells will be ringing, saints will be singing, because this world is not my home. I'm a pilgrim, I'm a stranger. I'm just traveling through here and I'm trying to do the best I can with eternity, with what is spiritual, and giving my life for others. So that when it's all over, he won't call me bishop. He won't call me pastor. He won't call me reverend. He won't call me any of that. Server, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many.